Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Yesterday, something remarkable happened in Los Angeles. Apparently, as the game entered the home stretch and the Lakers were behind, they would end up losing the game. But as the Lakers were behind, Coach Mike Brown, first-year Laker coach Mike Brown, decided to sit Kobe Bryant. He left Kobe on the bench. All I can say as a gambler, and remember, and I'm talking more as a gambler rather than as a fan. As a gambler, all I can say is, it's about time. You know, Kobe, as popular as he is, as great as his numbers look, really deserves more time on the bench because he's been costing his team. You know, the real number that matters is wins. And all I can say is when you have two big men like Andrew Bynum and Paul Gasol, and they're shooting over 50% some nights. In other words, they're owning the low posts, right? If you're looking for a mismatch on the court, it's there, right? When these two big men, and arguably talent-wise, they're the best big man tandem in the league. When these two big men are down in the low post and they're being very efficient offensively, you really can't have anybody hogging the ball, chucking up shots, even when that player is one of the most recognizable players in the world, right? The other day, Kobe shot 3 of 20. This was while Andrew Bynum was shooting north of 65% in the game. Right? First of all, the obvious. No one should be chucking up 20 shots when your center is shooting north of 65%. Right? The ball should go into the low post. Some of the best players in the history of the NBA. Big O, Oscar Robertson, Magic Johnson, dare I say, Number six, Miami, LeBron James. These guys intuitively know that you've got to feed the hot hand. And as Shaq liked to say back in his prime, you've got to keep the big dog fed. Now Kobe, as exciting as he looks on highlights, right, really hasn't been doing that. I believe, as a gambler, He's been costing his team. He's fun to watch. No question. He's fun to watch. Kobe, believe it or not, has been and remains one of my favorite players. But just as Wilt Chamberlain late in his career dialed back his scoring to get the Lakers a ring, Kobe Bryant is going to have to realize that the torch has already been passed to Andrew Bynum, who's one of the best big men in the game, and Paul Gasol. Let me also say this too. I know that if Jerry Buss were still active in the administration of the Lakers, that team would not even consider trading Paul Gasol. You've got to be kidding me. He remains one of the most skilled big men in the game. The fact that the Lakers were actually entertaining trading Paul, in fact, the fact that they traded him as part of the aborted Chris Paul deal that fell apart, tells me that the Lakers need to figure out what they're doing. I'm not sure, as I make this video, if they know what they're doing. You need to keep the big men. That's your comparative advantage. Kobe is going to have to realize that the only time he should be chucking up 20 points is when the low post is not acting efficiently. Let me also say this too. Let's talk about Michael Jordan. 
You know, Michael Jordan never, and I mean never, had the opportunity to play with a Shaquille O'Neal like Kobe Bryant did. I, I could not even envision Michael Jordan, a guy who really is the sport's ultimate winner. I really couldn't even imagine Michael Jordan, a strong personality, having a feud with Shaquille O'Neal as the team wins championships just wouldn't happen. I mean, Jordan's a guy who got along with Dennis Rodman for crying out loud, right? Just wouldn't happen. Great players find a way to coexist. Nor could I imagine Michael Jordan having any kind of tension with a Paul Gasol or ignoring an Andrew Bynum and a Paul Gasol in games in which both guys are shooting better than 50%. Look at Bynum's numbers from yesterday. I believe he got to 30 points on better than 50% shooting, right? I believe even the dominant scorers in league history, like Michael Jordan, would keep the big dog fed and would literally have the ball go into the low post if the low post has been operating as efficiently as the Laker low post has been operating particularly this season, right? So if Kobe didn't get the memo, if there are enough fans out there who are more interested in dunks than wins, let me just contribute to the public debate by saying, look, you know, Kobe should be on the bench in crunch time if he's not getting the ball to the hot hand, period, right? You know, are the Lakers about wins or are they about highlights on ESPN? The team's going to have to figure it out. I can tell you as a gambler, I cringe looking at the lines in Laker games simply because I don't know whether Kobe is going to shoot them to a win or if Kobe by himself is going to shoot them out of the building to a loss taking more than 20 shots, hitting less than 50% of his shots, when he has a center who was in the All-Star game this year, Andrew Bynum, and he has a power forward who is a multiple All-Star in Paul Gasol, both of whom look sorely neglected to me. Let me know what you think. I know this point of view is a little bit um, upstream against popular opinion, but all I could say is, for my first exhibit, look at the box score from last night. And for my second exhibit, look at the box score from Kobe's 3 of 20 shooting day. Just ask yourself, okay, great players will have terrible shooting days. But what was he doing putting up 20 shots in that game, given the stats of his two big men in that same game. Shouldn't the ball have been going into the low post? All I'm saying is it would be as if Magic Johnson back in the day during showtime just decided that he was going to ignore Kareem and James Worthy. Doesn't work. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com as well as dwyersports.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.